Martin McKee Baker, and now here's the host of the show and my parents, Jim and Lori Baker. Welcome, everyone. The Hi rabbi's there. taking us on a prophetic tour yes. through the world. So exciting. We've been all over the world. <laughs> we have. We have. And uh, if they just tuned in, we've talked somewhat about Israel. You've just returned from Israel. Yes. Update that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Uh, well, Israel's doing great. Again, there are more. Uh, we, we touched on there's more Christians coming now than ever, 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 to the point where I've had to, I never did this before. I did this once with you, but I've had to be doing it in the autumn and the spring every time, to di different tours because it's so much happening there. You know what that scene is? You may remember. Yes, arriving. That's a scene as soon as we come up to Jerusalem. We're ascending the mountains. It's the wow. first time they're seeing Jerusalem. Oh. You remember, you remember, remember Mondo when you Mondo. first saw Jerusalem? It changed my life. Yeah. It did. Yeah, that, I always love it because it's, it's the center of everything. We talk about, we're talking about prophecy. It's a yes. real place and it's on the mountain. Mountains. You're going right. up. You're going up. So that's the moment they saw. Jeru we see Jerusalem. Uh -huh. um, and, and if they have other ones, uh, that, uh, that is. Oh. I'm on the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. That is where you can get arrested. We've been thrown off by the Muslims. They don't want any prayer. They don't want any Bible. Anything. Mm -hmm. But I always manage to do as I'm talking. I'm talking just like this. I'm doing the ironic blessing. Yes. You know, so I managed to sneak Rabbi it in. Rabbi sneaks so, it in. Yeah, if you have anything, I'll... I'll it's I'll great. I love these pictures. Oh, wow. That, oh. Is, that is underground. We go into the temple, the under the tunnels under the temple. Yes. It's the closest place to the Holy of Holies. In fact, I don't know if you have another one. That, where she's praying right there, that's the that's the walled up place of where they think the Holy of Holies was. Mm. You know, that's what that is there. Yeah. So wow. uh, let, powerful. That is we we always take a prophetic journey love that part. to the eastern eastern gate. That yeah. gate is where Messiah is coming back. Yeah. He's coming through that gate. Amen. So we always do it's amazing. So we always do that. Take a good look that. at it. You know. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing. I, I think we're due for another tour. <laughs> uh, we're past due, well, come, Mondo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're, this spring, we're going. So that's from the Garden of Gethsemane at night. Oh. The first time we ever tried to do the Garden of Gethsemane at night was with Art when you were there. Yeah. Our, that was the first time we that ever night. did that. And you're in the Garden at night. We're having communion at the Garden. Yes. And you can see the... From there, you can see the temple, like just as Jesus would have done that. So, yes. so yeah, Very so we're going special. in spring and then we're going in autumn. But, that, but yeah, <laughs> oh, thank you for sure. man. It's, so you're it's going again in the spring? spring? Yeah, going in spring and then the, and then the autumn after that. You've been sharing with Worth us it. the mysteries <laughs> yes. of uh, principalities yes. this week. Yes. And this is our third day with you. Yes. And uh, we want everybody to order the video and audio series End Time oh. Mysteries and Wonders six disc album set with uh, Jonathan Kahn, Rabbi. And he, what he's done is he's made three CDs just for you, just for our, our viewing audience. So these uh, three CDs are the Prophecy yes. Disc yes. CD, the, the Royal, Royal Mystery and Love Story. Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and also... The, the Maccabean, Maccabean Mystery and End Time Blueprint, which is the, mo the most detailed blueprint of the end times. In the, I mean, amazing. And linked to Hanukkah, but linked to what's happening right now. And the, and the DVDs are the hosts of Baal. We're going to get into a little bit of it here. I can, I'll do as much as I can. But the hosts of Baal, which is what's happening right now. The mystery of the Yoruba King and finding where you are in the Bible. We won't, we won't talk about that, but that's for each one to discover. But you actually are in the Bible, and it can, really can change your life. That's why I put that on there. So everybody for, needs this set. For, if, Reset the stage just a little yeah. bit more sure. for those who haven't yes. been watching each sure. day. You can, by the way, anytime you miss a show, you can go pick it up at will, 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. on our website at jimbakershow.com, uh, and you can go get it all from PTL Network, PTL Network, on Roku, Roku Network, Apple TV, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Amazon Fire Stick, the new one. Yeah, it's on. And demand. if you don't have these, that I. I wish everybody would join one of those networks. Yes. The the it's big the, new one is uh, the Amazon Fire Stick. Mm -hmm. And what Mondo's trying to teach us, and they're trying that, to help us along here, Jim, is that it's on what's called on demand. So that means you can go to all of the. Mm -hmm. You can go to PTL mm -hmm. Network. It's on demand. You can go to Roku on demand. Am Apple TV on demand. Amazon Fire TV on demand. Meaning anytime you want to watch this broadcast or any of our broadcasts. And all the networks that these major networks want are free. Yes. You don't pay it. You these don't have to pay streaming. You don't rent it after you. You, you just get the box. Watch. Most of the Christian networks are on these and, mm. and other, most stations are on. It's, a, it's the new wave and it could mean that you will have broadcasts mm -hmm. in, in times that might not 
be so easy. Yeah, mm. it's a new way to stay connected with with your favorite ministry, which is the Jim Baker Show Ministries. <laughs> but you can stay connected with us. We have live events, a lot of different things that we're gearing up for 2019 that you're only going to be able to see exclusively on PTL Network on Roku, Amazon TV, or uh, Apple TV. Okay, reset the stage for us, okay. and let's let's get started. Yeah, yeah the Bible is very clear about something that a lot of people miss. Most believers might say, okay, I know that the worship of the gods is a demonic thing, but that's, it goes farther than that. The Bible says, we saw it from the Torah all the way to Paul, says that when these people are worshiping these gods, they are actually worshiping demons. In other words, these are princip there are principalities behind what they were, the gods of the nations. They're not really gods, but they're principalities. So, so what does that reveal? I mean, first of all, it's not just, you know, back then, if you were around the world, you'd see all these, these crazy things. You'd see statues of, I mean, if you go to India, you can see it too. But you'll see all these, these half animal, half this, these are the gods and all that. But what it's saying is, in modern times, in most modern times, most, when you go to most places, you're not going to see them anymore because pretty much th these were kind of cleansed out. When the gospel came in to Rome, kind of cleansed it out. So you don't see it so much in modern times. So that makes it, that makes the, but the principalities are still there. They may not have those masks, but they're still there. That makes it in many ways more dangerous. Like when you, when you for instance, <clears throat> when you look at a phenomenon like Adolf Hitler yeah. and, and the Third Reich, you cannot understand that. Without, there's nothing natural about it. It's Horrible. supernatural, demonic, satanic, evil. There's like, it's an entire nation getting possessed, you know, yes. starting with Hitler. Yes. And so it is a, a, a pagan, demonic. There are principalities. Why, why was he so obsessed with destroying the Jewish people? Why? Well, clear, the, the Satan is. We know yes. that. Yes. So it's clearly a supernatural phenomenon. And not only that, people don't realize the Nazi party was started by an occult organization. It was an occult organization that started the Nazi party. That's an absolute fact. Totally oh. occult, they started this party. So it's totally there. Now, so there are principalities that we have to... Now, now many of us know John Winthrop. John Winthrop was the Puritan who came over, see, I mean, he came from Europe. And when he came over, he wrote this, this, this sermon called, that called A Model of Christian Charity where he said, America shall be as a, we shall be as a city on a hill. That's where we get that, Reagan, oh. city on a hill, city on a hill. It was the very first symbol of America was from John, is city, not the flag, not the eagle, city on a hill, which comes uh -huh. from Jesus, of course. But here's, here's, that's from John Winthrop. And so people quote that, you know, they quote that America. But what people don't realize is right after that, Winthrop gave a prophetic warning to America. Mm. And what he said is, and first of all, he said, if we follow God, we will become blessed. The blessings of Israel will come to us. We'll be prosperous. We'll become strong militarily, and all those things came true. But they missed the next part. He said, but if, we, if our hearts shall turn away from God, if America turns away from God, but notice it says that the same things that happened to Israel will happen to us. Well, well, you could put this in here, put in the harbinger right now, and put yeah. in the paradigm. The same mm. things that happened in the fall of Israel will happen in the fall of America. Well, that's what we're actually seeing it. That's, that's what those books are revealing. It's still mm. happening. But he says something else. So that all goes back to Winthrop, John Winthrop. But he, he actually quoted from Moses. When he's talking to America, he's quoting from Moses. He's speaking Moses' word to Israel. He's saying now it's to America. Okay, but here's the warning. If America ever turns away from God, he says, then listen to what he says. If we don't obey him, his ways, but if we shall be seduced and worship other gods. Now, back then they weren't worshiping other gods outright. They were, except for maybe if you're a witch, they weren't doing that. So what's he saying? He says, we shall worship other gods, our pleasures and our prophets, mm. and serve them. We shall surely perish from this land. Mm. Judgment will come. Now, now keep this in mind. So he's identifying gods, but he's not saying we're going to be seeing we're going to be seeing these idols. We'll have our own idols. We won't call them that. We'll have we'll have gods of desire and gods of profit. Those will be gods, even though we will call them prophet. It will be gods. He uses the same template. Now, so here's the question: What were the gods of Israel's fall? Of what were the principalities? 
involved in the fall of Israel. Because if, if we're replaying Israel, we, you know, the harbinger is the signs that were in Israel. Paradigms, the events and the people. These are now the principalities mm. that we're going to open. So what were the principalities? Well, there was one principality above all. And if it, if it was part of that, leading Israel away from God, then if we're following the pattern of Israel, ancient Israel, could we be dealing with them right now? Well, what was the first god of all the false gods of the Canaanites? His name was Baal. We call him Baal. Who was he? He is the god of thunder, the god of clouds, the god of fertility, the god of increase and gain. He's the one who promised you to get more profit in it. And he's the king of the gods, lord of the gods. His name, Baal, or Baal, actually means, lord, in Hebrew, it means lord or your owner, your master. Whatever, is your, whatever owns you, that's your god. Whatever you serve, that's your god. So Baal was the god of their apostasy. He's the god of a nation that once knew God and is now turning away from the God of the Bible. He becomes their God. He is the, he is the, he is the, the God of materialism, the, turning them away from the Spirit, turning them to material things, carnality, um, uh, immorality. His worship was all linked to this sensual, sensuality. Baal, the false God. So now we have America. We have America founded after the pattern of Israel. And Winthrop says, but if we serve other gods. Well, the chief God is Baal. So what is, is there a, the principality at work? Baal, remember, was promising them more fertility, more, more prosperity, the God of materialism. It was at the height of America's prosperity, which is a blessing from God. In the mid-20th century, we're talking, say, 1950s into the 60s, and now we're going to go to the, all the way to here, that America began very noticeably turning away from the God of its foundation. We all remember, well, we all know uh, when we, we made that decision, prayer is now out of school. It was a landmark. People were shocked at the time. Now it's shocking the idea that all, all, all American schools actually had prayer. That's, yeah. a, that's shocking right now. Yeah. But that's how much we've turned. That's right. Mm. They took, they took that's prayer that's out, right. took the Bible out, began to take these things out. And from that, what happened in Baal? Baal started, the principality behind Baal, started leading the people to drive God out of their public life. They started eliminating prayer, eliminating the name of God, eliminating the worship of God, eliminating one step at a time as Baal came in. And it was, you know, we, we alluded to this before, it was the, there were calls for a new morality. There were calls for be tolerant, all those things. And so we started witnessing that in, the, say, the 1960s. You know, that, that starts there. But Baal was not alone. He had a he had another one. He had a consort. It was a female goddess. Her name was Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth in Phoenician, it was Astarte. This is the goddess of Jezebel. This is also, she's also called Ishtar. You've heard of Ishtar. That's another form of Ashtoreth. She was the goddess or the principality of lust, of sexual immorality. Her priestess were literally prostitutes. They were called holy prostitutes. The religion of the Canaanites, they, they actually performed sexual acts as sacred rites. So what's, what's happening under the principality of Ashtoreth is that sexuality is taken out of the sacred realm of the, of the, of the marriage covenant, and it's taken out of marriage. It becomes fornication, becomes adultery. Beco puts on, it's being displayed publicly. This is part of their religion. It becomes part of popular culture. So this is the principality of sexual immorality. So what happened to America? No accident. First comes Baal, driving God out, driving God out, turning away. But then what followed it was what? The sexual revolution. Sure did. It's the principality of Ashtoreth. Wow. The principality which takes sexuality out of marriage, which we've been watching, weakens marriage, that's the same thing we're watching because it weakens marriage, and then it puts it out of into fornication, puts it into adultery. So we watched our whole culture be transformed. And so what happens when you do that? When you take sexuality out of the, the marriage covenant, the whole popular culture, the whole culture becomes sexualized. Why? It's supposed to be in the bedroom, but it's here in the culture. Where did all that come from? It came from the covenant of marriage. So marriage is weakened. So we're watching that in America, yeah. divorce. 
And all over comes sexuality everywhere, public display. And what you had in the days of Ashtoreth, this principality, is you had images like that, images of sexual, yet yeah, worse than that, I mean, images of naked women all over the place. Well, what have we seen in our culture? Images all over of, we have, we have, we call it pornography. Mm. We had an explosion, but that's what happened back then, except they, did it, they didn't have an internet. They did it on the stone, but it was all over. So you had pornography. In fact, in Gre ancient Greek, the word for prostitute is porne. That's where we get the word porn from. So you have the days of this, and actually sexuality becomes commercialized. So we've gotten that to that as well. So you've got a so you had under the principality of Ashtoreth, you have a sexual revolution. So in America, same it's not the the mask is gone, it's behind in the shadows, but same principality of the fall. Baal first, then Ashtoreth, sexual revolution. So that's what we have witnessed to this day. Yes. Then there was one other of this unholy trinity. And the, and the last one, and it's actually even foreshadowed with Ashtoreth, because she wasn't only the goddess of sexual immorality. She had a sword. She was the god of destruction. And so what it's saying is also that this sexual immorality ends up bringing destruction. And it has. It's brought destruction of marriages, yes. destruction of children, right. destruction of lives. But the, the god that, that was the, the, or the principality the, the, that completed that is the third one, is the god Moloch. Mm. Moloch, what is this god? This is the one that the Israelites would come to, as you see in that image, mm -hmm. would come to, and they would lift up their children on his bronze arms, and they would roll the children into the fire. They would sacrifice their children to the gods. Why on earth would any nation, any people sacrifice their children? The Bible says children are a gift of God. God is telling us my gift. They sacrifice. The, God says, you have caused your children to pass through the fire. I will judge you for that. Mm. So here is the God. Why? We're Why did he do that? Judged. Because the promise was, if you do this, you can get whatever you want from the God. So you'll get prosperity. I want to increase. I want more money. So I will offer up my children. That They would approach and they would do that. What about America? You yeah. have Baal, apostasy, materialism, turning away from God, carnality. You have Ashtoreth, sexual revolution. And then the sexual Ashtoreth leads to Moloch. Then you have the principality of Moloch. The sexual revolution brought the weakening of marriage, destruction of marriages, of lives. And then just as the bronze arms of the idol took their children, ten years after the removal of God... You have the killing of the nation's children begins. That's right. Mm. The principality of Moloch begins to rule. Under the principality of Moloch, when you remove, see, when you remove God, you can end up, then you can remove those who are in the image of God. That's the connection. When you remove the sanctity of life and, and of sexuality, then your children, so then they were, they were burned with fire. We burn them with chemicals and dismember yes, them. That's right. They offered up thousands to their God. We have offered up millions of children. So now the mo and, and now here's the thing. It's a it's a weird thing because there are these modern day priests of Baal. And by the way, I said Baal is in, in Baal. You find all these things too because they offered up to Baal too. You know, so Baal is like, is encompassing it, but Moloch is the specific one. So you actually have modern day you have abortionists, modern day priests of Baal. I'm not saying they know it, because they don't, because it, it, these are principalities. And they will make quotes. These are actual quotes. Abortion is a major blessing and a sacrament in the hands of women. A sacrament, a holy thing. That's what it was back then. That's a satanic thing. Another one, another a radical feminist author wrote a book called The Sacrament of Abortion. Uh. She said, it is not immoral to choose abortion. It is simply another kind of morality, a pagan one. Mm -hmm. And so and he goes, she goes on to say, abortion is a sacrifice to Artemis. She's talking about a goddess that's based on all these things. See, see so you've got all these things. Now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another, I'm going to share something here that I don't even know that I've ever shared at Beth Israel. Ashtoreth, there, there's something else here now. Let me, let me put it this way. Man is in the image of God. But when man worships idols and other gods, he starts losing who he is, the image. He becomes something, something, something starts changing. So listen, so Ashtoreth, listen, 
to this for those who were watching the news, was also the god of androgyny. She was the god of merging male and female. She was the goddess of con the confusion of gender. Mm. So what does this mean? What is this, re what is this revelation telling us now? Wow. It means when the sexual revolution under this principality of Ashtoreth is going to end up, not at the beginning, but as it goes on, it's going to end increasingly to the confusing of gender. Ultimately, it will be a war on gender. Mm. She was shown, Ashtoreth was shown, as having male and female aspects. And this is a quote from the ancient pagan writing. She says, though I am a woman, I am a man. Her priests, the priests of Ashtoreth, were men who crossed the boundaries of gender. They were cross, if you could believe it, cross-gender men. And the other part of all these, of these gods, these principalities, is, and we alluded to it earlier, but now we're talking about principalities. Once the worship, remember, if you were living back then, and, and someone says, hey, you know, just a little bit of worship with Baal. It won't be bad. You know, at the beginning, they started taking Baal, and they started actually joining him to God. They actually started calling Yahweh Baal and Baal Yahweh. They started having images. So first they confused it. You know, God is now the God of materialism. They started But then once, once it started prevailing, like in the days of, this is the paradigm now, Ahab and Jezebel, mm -hmm. well, you had the worship of Baal. But so, so when, and Ashtoreth. But when, once it started prevailing, then the spirit, the principalities of Baal and Ashtoreth say, no other gods but us. No other gods. So now we're going to stamp out the believers. We're, going to we're either going to force them to bow their knee to Baal. That's the spirit. Or we're, or we're going to kill them. So, so we're, we're, going to, we're going to erratic persecute them. So the spirit of Baal is ultimately not just to turn a, a seduce a nation away from the God of Israel, but ultimately to then compel them to worship and then stamp it out. So first we saw the seduction part. Now we, we see there, that's still there, but we're seeing now more compulsion. We're seeing that again. Some of the stories that just happened this year never would have happened before. Happen now. So here's another thing. Keep something in mind too. Wow. What did they do? They didn't just say that principalities, it wasn't just let's do this, let's do this in the dark. It was done on the temp, on their temp, on the, in the center of their shrines and temples. So what, what's it saying? They were, weren't just doing it. They were calling it holy, and they were celebrating the sin. They were literally celebrating it. So it means that with the priests of Ashtoreth and the priests of Baal who were merging male and female, they were celebrating the confusion of gender. They were, and we were, again, you look and say, say, why is this happening? This is kind of crazy. Well, it goes back all the way back to that. And so, you know, at one point, the prophet Jeremiah comes to the leaders of Israel and he takes a jar and he, it's the famous part, he smashes it and he says, this is Israel. But where he does it is in front of the valley called Hinnom. The valley, and you go to Israel, you can see it to this day. The valley of Ben Hinnom or Hinnom. What is it from, why that valley? Why did judgment come because of that? Jeremiah, it said, God says to Jeremiah, because you have done this in this valley, because in that valley is where they offered up their children. And there's a fire burning. There's fires burning. That's where, so you got from this thing, the valley of Hinnom in Hebrew is Gehinnom Gehenna. When Jesus talks about hell, he's, he uses that valley. That shows you how hellish this thing is yeah. to be lifting up your children. Yes. Be called, <clears throat> so Jeremiah said, God said, because you did it, judgment will come to the same valley that you have offered up this. That's where the judgment's going to come to Jerusalem. So in, in Jeremiah, the enemy came and attacked the same place that was linked to the offering of children. Now, now when I wrote The Harbinger, <laughs> and you know, of course, the first sign was 9-11. And the first time the, where the first strike comes on America. And we know, and that was the beginning of the harbingers. And we, we went, you know, those are the nine manifestations of judgment. But think about something, what I just told you. This is something I haven't shared. Jeremiah is saying, God is saying to Jeremiah, the judgment's going to come to the place where you worship the gods and where you offered your children. It's going to be linked to the offering of children. Well, it came to, where did it come to? 9-11. It came to New York City first, primarily. What is the abortion capital of America? New York City. Same place. Same place. It came to the center of where we kill the most children. But New York City is, is, I'm not talking about every part of New York City, but New York City is the Valley of Hinnom for us because that's where that was. The strike also involved Washington, D.C. Of course, it's the government, but 
you know what? Planned Parenthood has two headquarters. One is New York City. The other is Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., in the days of the Clinton administration and others, became under the administration, became a vessel for abortion. The, 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 the Twin Towers were finished in the year 1973. What happened in 1973? Abortion was legalized in 1973. That's right. So the Twin Towers have been saying they were to be a monument to, you know, for America to do this, you know, skyscraper, that we're reaching the heavens, America, America, but it marked the years, the Twin Towers were standing for the years that we began killing children. 1973, they'd be a monument. And actually, do you know when abortion was first legalized before it became the law of the land? First of all, you know where it was? New York. New York was the first state to legalize abortion on demand. And do you know when it did that? It did that in 1970. Do you know when the towers started rising? 1970. So it started rising as that did, and they were both were finished at the same time. They both existed for that same time. And do you know the hand, the, same, the hand that signed the paper to begin the rising of the towers was the same hand that signed the document that began abortion in America, mm. in New York City. I mean, New York and the world. Same hand, same thing. And, and how many were killed in 9-11? Listen, about the same amount of people who are killed every day in abortion. It matched the number. Yeah. And nobody mourns, and there's no celebrations. Now, in the... Wow. It was in the same... The first king in Israel to endorse child sacrifice was Ahab with Jezebel. The first president to, to champion abortion was Bill Clinton, it's clear. And that's where the culture war came. It's not about the people, but it's about the science. And we saw, and just things like that, that with each of the leaders from then on are matching up with the ancient leader of the fall, in the fall of Israel. Example, King Ahab was on the public stage for 22 years, the Bible says. Bill Clinton was on the public stage for how long? 22 years. That in the 19th year of that king, in that reign, there's a personal scandal that is exposed in, of Ahab, in the 19th year of Clinton being on the public stage, public scandal exposed. Um, every, I'm not going to go into every single thing. Three, the, the king repents, Ahab repents, publicly at least, then he turns back. Three years later from the king's repentance, a, a, a judgment comes on the land, a strike comes on the land. Bill Clinton makes his repentance in the White House. He says, this is my repentance. Three years later comes 9-11 to the day, to the minute. To, of this, all these things. So all these things, and of course the king was not alone. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going into all these things, but he, would, he had a co-regency. Bill Clinton had a co-presidency. It's not about the person. We need to pray for all the people. But Jezebel's key issue was Baal and the worship of Baal and Ashtoreth, these things, and the lifting up of the babies. Well, the key issue of Hillary Clinton has been the same. Her issue has been abortion. Planned Parenthood made her the abortion champion of the century. So you've got all this, but then at that moment, just to set the stage here, at that moment, when it looks like it's going to seal the, the apostasy of the nation, all of a sudden, God raises up this unlikely guy who is a wild guy, who is, who, is, who is a fighter, who's unpredictable. His name is Jehu. So in America, at the moment when it looks like it's going to be sealed, this guy comes up out of nowhere, uh, unlikely guy, Donald Trump, follows the prototype of Jehu. Wild, unpredictable, <laughs> not a politician, a fighter. Uh, you don't ever know what he's going to do, what he's going to say next. And he, but he goes like unpredictable. He, he comes head to head. Je now, this is Jehu. Jehu comes head-to-head -head with the former first lady of Israel. Donald Trump comes head-to-head -head with the former first lady of America, Hillary Clinton. And everybody's saying that Hillary Clinton's going to win, it's going to wipe out all that, most people saying that. But uh, the paradigm says when they come head-to-head, -head, Jehu will become triumphant, Donald Trump will become triumphant. So that's exactly what happened. That's where we are now, okay, that's where we are in this window here, but now, now let's bring that into the principalities. Let's bring it to, let's combine this now. And it's something, one, when Je, Jehu dealt with the principalities, he dealt with Baal. He's the one, when he got to the capital, what did he do? He destroyed the temple of Baal. He was against child sacrifice. And so, so he, so it falls. So the principle is that when Jehu, when the, when the fighter, when this warrior rises, the temple of Baal falls. So there is actually a temple of Baal that, is, that was existing for 2,000 years, survived Caesar, survived everything, survived modern age. All of a sudden, Donald Trump, the, the, Donald Trump announces his candidacy 
Two months later, the temple of Baal falls to the earth. Just like Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. Temple of Baal falls. So it falls. So there, so there, but now, that, now that's a, an actual event in the Middle East. It falls, but representing spiritual reality, principalities, realities. Which are, and and so, so we have this war. So Donald Trump has sought to, to, to protect life. He sought to go against abortion, the killing of children. He sought that again and again. Thank God he saw that. But now something else happens. When Donald Trump was running against Hillary Clinton, as, it's, as the campaign is, this warfare is coming to its head, last month, heading to the last month, everything's coming to its head, it is just then when in New York City a sign appears, a, in a sense a harbinger appears, what happens in New York City, that is when the arch of the god Baal appears in New York. Wow. That is literally the arch of the principality Baal. And so when does it happen? When the warfare is at its, at its most. It's when, it's when there's the, the forces of, for life, the forces against life, that's when it comes to its head. Remember in that time they had debates on television? And remember the, on the last debate it actually came head to head? Mm -hmm. And they said, yes. what do you think about abortion? And Donald Trump said, this is basically murder. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton says, no, I'm for it. I mean, you couldn't be clearer than that. At that time, the Arch of Baal appears in New York City, the, the center of, of what happened, the center of abortion. Yes. Appears, but, it's, but it wasn't just the, the act, it was the timing. But remember, now here's something else. Since I've been here, we had another kind of big showdown, and that is that, that it, it's the future of the Supreme Court. Right. And it's the Supreme Court, remember? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. And... and it's a warfare. I mean, it, if you couldn't sense that, <laughs> warfare. Everything, and it's not talking about the issues. It wasn't about, it wasn't even about him. It's about, the issues were that the one side knows that this may be, this might, this might limit our ability to have abortion, kill, to kill unborn children. That's right. And, and, and all yeah. those other issues linked to the Bible. Yeah. And so that was the ultimate issue. It didn't matter who it was. That was the issue. So you have this whole, you have this coming to a head and all that. Well, something happens. Something happens the day before those hearings began. I'm talking about when they were going to have the one testify and everything, everything came into full gear. You know, yes. the, the, yes. the, 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 again, it's warfare, spiritual warfare. Something happens in Washington, D.C. An object appears now in Washington. The object is the Arch of Baal. <laughs> Look where it is. That came up just as that warfare that was coming to a head, the future Supreme Court Bail, bail, the, ch the offering of children. And notice where they put it. They put it right on the, I'm not saying they knew what they were doing. I'm not saying they knew it all, but the principalities know. That's right. That is the arch of Baal through which the worshipers of Baal would offer up their children, would go into the temple and worship Baal. That is put right in front of the Capitol. What's happening at the Capitol? At that very moment, at, in the Capitol is the hearings for oh, the future of America. My God. That's where it is. That's wow. how real this is. That's, a, wow. and you, and you, that's how real. This is shocking. I mean, the way it comes together, yeah. mm -hmm. it is so shocking. How did you, how did you find these <laughs> signs through here? Th this, this section here, you, you all have to order this set because yeah. this is giving you the basis of bail, the basis of yes. abortion, yes. the basis of all the hell we're seeing right now. Yes. But it's also back in the Bible. Right. You're getting this out of the word of the living God. Half rapidly, of America rapidly. believes Trump is an a evil man. The other half believes that God sent him <laughs> as an answer to America. A headline today, Anchorage earthquake was a big one. But it could have been much worse. Why L.A. should take warning. Los Angeles has been warned and warned and warned. I believe if you want to know where the judgment's coming, study the cities that are anti-God, that have taken stands against the things of God. People... I don't believe this is going to be, the, the, uh, next year is going to be the big year, good year. I think it's going to be a shaking, shaking year. 
And that's what I sense, and that's what I feel. And as I study the Word of God, perilous times are coming, not good times. If, if we, re we can have a revival, we could have a great move of God, but it's not happening. Man has to do something. They have to turn to God. And, and what you teach us, it, it's like in, it's in concrete and steel. It is, it is the word of the living God. And all these things that you have shared with us this week so far, they're here. They've happened. And they're biblical. And that's the great mystery of the Shemitah, the Harbinger, the Paradigms, all of these things that you've written about. You're taking us. You know where you're going, don't you? Hmm. You're taking us down a warning road. Yeah. And it is so serious. It's very serious. But yet, millions won't turn to it. Church people won't turn back to hmm. God. Hmm. The Bible, it's there, people. The word of the living God is giving us, the, this is where the rabbi's teaching. And he's teaching from the word. We're in serious, serious times, people. And we're trying to kill, our, our people in our country are trying to kill the president who God gave us to literally turn Amer help turn America. An unlikely person. Yeah. Can I ask you another question? Yeah, and sure. then we'll go. Why? Why does God have to send unlikely people because to the, rule the, and to turn America right now. Yeah, the likely said no. Oh, God uses the unlikely. You know, there, sometimes it's only the unlikely who will do what oh, is unlikely, my. what is needed. Because wow. when you get such a radical state, you need something unlikely. Okay, to wh happen. why? Absolutely. Why can't people so Mondo, get now it? We know why we're around. But why <laughs> can't people? Unlikely. Why cannot the church <laughs> get what God's trying to say to the church right now? Some, Are we that decadent? Some, some do, but they're usually the remnant. Even in the, in, the day, in the model of the Bible, how many people weren't bowing to Baal? You know, 7,000. You know, how many people? It's better than just one Elijah, but, but they didn't. It's usually the remnant. It's the remnant. And so they're there, but... Others are very asleep. Keith Green, we mentioned, yes. wrote, a, wrote, a, wrote a song, yes. Asleep in the Light. Yes. We're asleep, and there's so much of the church that is, that is afraid of the world, intimidated, and so just go, wants to go along with it. They don't want trouble, but you can never serve God. These, this is not the day. It's the night. The night requires that shining candle. But, that, but those are going to be the giants. We are living in those days where we can be giants as well. Okay. This is so powerful. You folks, please... The only way I can extend an hour show is by you getting the tape and listening to this. All of this material in its extended form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, only, I can only touch, but uh, this is the point. Because the ultimate point is, and it, it's going where you're going, is, is what do we do? You know, what do we yes. do now? Right. We are living in the days of, of the gods, but these are the same. Day. Remember, listen, Moses challenged the gods, the principalities of Egypt. Yes. Elijah challenged the principalities. You know, yes. he was stronger. We are still stronger with this. We have to know the sign. We have to know where we're living. We are living in, if you're living and you're watching these things, it means you are living in prophetic times. We have to, we have, the church has to become prophetic. We have to speak truth. We have to, we have to be radical. Elijah, th these are the days of Elijah. Remember, Elijah was radical. He was radical. He wasn't easy. Are you going. radical? I, I, I hope I am, because that's what I'm supposed I to be. I think you are. <laughs> because you're speaking at the Capitol. You're speaking you to Congress. You're speaking to the United Nations. And uh, I, I'm shocked because you were, when you were a kid, you, were, you had a rock band. And, and here he is, <laughs> God's man who God picks. And, and many, many leaders say that he's one of the great leaders of our day. And I believe he is. I, I believe he's a very humble man, but he knows his call. That's it. And he is, it, I, I can't wait to have you back because I can't wait to hear what's coming next. We're li he's, he delivers to us the real live truth of the word of God. Mm. Yes. It's where we're going right now. Right. So close this out today. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah, well, we, we are in the balance. We are in the balance right now. And if there's not revival, 
we are progressing to judgment. That, that's, that's the clear thing. And falling away. We are, but now for the people of God. But if there's revival, we've got to pray for revival. We, gotta, we still have to pray for revival. We have to earnestly pray, more so. We have to, and, and listen, we can't control somebody else having revival. We can control us having revival. We can start living in revival. Yeah. That's for all of us. It's right. a call because if we're revival, if we're on fire, we become contagious. Yeah. So, that's, so, so let, uh, let that be our call. And, and the other thing is that it is a call, you know, I, I'm alluding to this to say that these are biblical times. I mean, the, the, yeah. all the players are in there. I mean, all these things are together. So let's be biblical people. Let's live biblical lives. And when I say Elijah, you know, we sing these are the days yes. of Elijah. Yeah. Well, well, if these are the days of Elijah, let us finally become the Elijahs of the day. Yeah. It is time to become Good. the Elijahs of the day. Good. Elijah was not intimidated by Baal. He, he wasn't intimidated by political correctness. He, he didn't go along with that at all. You know, he's the one who's on, on the top of the mountain, and he sees Baal, and he's sarcastic. He says, guys, how come? Maybe, you're, maybe Baal's on vacation, or maybe Baal's asleep. Shout louder. You know, but that's, that's a holy thing because he was not respecting that. He does, we, we, we war not against flesh and blood. We war against the principalities. So we don't respect evil. You know, we are, we are, we are, but we have to be strong. God wants us strong people. Not that we're strong in ourselves, but we're strong in him. And God, he says, be strong. What did, what did we, I begin with? Paul said, we are fighting. Therefore, be strong in the power of his might. God wants us to walk in that power and in that might. Pray, be an Elijah, be a Moses, be an Esther. All these people had to make a choice. All these people had to shine. All these people had to say, you know, it's not, I don't care what happens. Whatever goes, um, it doesn't matter. Let the chips fall where they, they may. Um, for me and my house, I'm serving the Lord. And, and everything else is his thing. Yeah. That's the way we have to be. These could be great times, Jim, for those who will, who will be great. This is, a, this, is a, this is an invitation to greatness for us. Mm. Mm. My heart aches because so many church people don't get it. This is a... We got to pray for that. The shout from yeah. God is we gotta, so loud. We gotta pr yeah, we got to pray for that. Yeah, C.S. Lewis said, God whispers in our pleasures, but he shouts in, with the pain. That's his, and he's trying to get through. That's right. That's right, as he did to Israel. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important we keep going and we don't give up. And right. We keep going yes. with, a, with a mantle. What is God saying to you you, you've delivered an amazing uh, teaching to us today from the Word. Mm. And we have had God shouting loud. 9-11 mm. was as loud of a shout as a nation could have. Yes. We all saw it. Hardly anybody did not see 9-11 on big screen television in your own bedroom or living, right? I saw it. Lori was with me. What will, we, what will wake us? What do you think may come next? I think we are, America is at such a hardened point in its culture that it's, it will take, it will take some calamity. 9-11 yeah. almost did. I and mean, you notice people for that time, almost, yeah. Yeah. but it didn't, almost. Almost. And so I believe we are at that hard in time, except for the grace of God, and so, and that, that it, would take a, it will take a calamity mm -hmm. for us to turn. Yeah. I'm talking for this yeah. culture. Listen to me. Yeah. Right. I have heard you speak for several, not uh, several decades, but uh, for over years. a decade. Years. What you just said is one of the most important statements he's ever made. I believe what you said is truth. Mm. I believe it's time for the church to prepare and to prepare one another. Yes. Yeah. Wow. We need to take this so seriously, more serious than we've ever taken anything before in our entire Would you lives. pray for us as sure, we go off the sure, air today? Sure, sure. Let, let's pray. Join me wherever you are watching. Father, we just praise you and we thank you. You are the Lord of all. And we thank you, Lord, that, that your word that you have given is coming to pass in all things. You're the God who fulfills his promises to his people. 
And Father, we, we ask and we pray and we intercede for the United States of America. Yes, Lord. This nation, this civilization that was founded on the Word of God, was dedicated in prayer to be a city on the hill, yes. to, be, to be a light to the nations. And we thank you for how you have used America and for what it has done. But Lord, America is in deep trouble. Uh, Lord, America is falling from you. Lord, America is falling away from your ways. We have called evil good and good evil. We have profaned the sacred and we have called sacred what is profaned. We have turned, Father, and turned to other gods. And Lord, we need revival and we ask, have mercy on this land. Yes, have Lord. mercy on this government. Have mercy on the new generation. Have mercy, Lord, on the church. Have mercy on the unsaved. Have mercy on those who would call us their enemies. Have mercy on them and save them, Lord. We, Lord, need revival. Without you, there is no revival. Lord, we need revival. And Father, we set our hearts, Lord, each of us, to pray for revival, to work for revival, and to live in revival. But Lord, send revival on the city. Send revival on New York. Send revival on San Francisco. Yes, send revival yes. in L.A. Lord, send revival oh. on Washington, D.C. Send revival on the Capitol. Revival on the White House, Father. Send revival in the heartland. Send yes. revival in Branson. Send, send revival Jesus. from the coast, Father. Have your way, Lord, and send revival, Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. Lord, let the gospel go forth, and let, Father, let this nation that was founded in your name again shine with the light of the glory of the power of the, the name of the living God in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the yes. Messiah, Amen. our hope, the way, and the truth in his holy name. Amen. We pray. Amen. 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 Powerful. Be sure to order this series of oh. teachings so you can hear it in its fullest, the end time mysteries and yes. wonders. Here's where we are. He brought us up to the gate, <laughs> right up to the door of the end times. Amen. You better Amen. listen to what it has to say. The king is coming, yes, people. The king is coming. I want you to get that. $55 gift is all, but it will help keep us on the air. But it's going to bless you to hear the filling out of this whole teaching that he has given us today. It's been amazing, Rabbi, and once I'm, again. More than amazing. And it helps us understand where we are and where we're headed if we don't really take heed to just the prayer you just prayed. <laughs> and I'm asking you to pray about helping me. There's people out there that you could send a building crew to help me finish it. You could build a road crew. He's talking about a, the chapel. Yeah, the, 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 the prayer, prayer chapel. mountain chapel. I've been Throwing this back and forth. I've talked to the studio audience about it. 